G'day folks. He's going over some of this uh, old uh, Sabre jet radar equipment and uh, I thought I'd pull out the meat, um, radiation meter, the uh, CDV700 and just give it all a bit of a run over and there's a few ticks from inside the uh, radar unit which is <coughs> currently not here, it's at work in, in the uh, well, in, on my uh, desk uh, a few of the guys at work wanted to see it, so I left it there and we'll uh, have another look at it tomorrow. But there's a few ticks from that, which is understandable because some of the uh, glass tubes in it can be uh, filled with radioactive gas. Um, but this one here was quite interesting. And the funny thing is the landing gear switch has three of these little uh, radium tips on it and none of them start ticking, but this one here is going crazy. So I'm guessing that little glass envelope's been knocked and is uh, cracked. Uh, it reads about 100 millirem from what I can tell, but the, meet, the gauge on this uh, meter is pretty loose inside. It was actually broken and jammed when I got it. It had been dropped in transit. So uh, with the, that's with the shutter open at point blank range. So I've put it on times 10. I'm using a small uh, headset speaker. That's on times 10, so 250 on times 10. It's all in millirads per hour, so it's uh, certainly not a dangerous dose, but a fair bit. It's not something you want to hang around your neck and use as a pendant, pendant for the rest of your life. That's on times 100. I just decided to sweep over the face to see if any of these markings were actually radium and then I got closer to this one and it started going off. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if I've showed the inside of this meter yet, so at least not on video. So we'll take it apart and have a look. Uh, this one here is a high level meter which I don't have batteries for. So I can't really show you much about that one. Certainly won't read anything here. It's designed. It's measured in rads per hour. So, if this thing's reading something, I'm essentially screwed. <laughs> That's basically what the guy who gave it to me said. This was a uh, subscriber donation from some time ago. It's made by Canadian Admiral, and these were re readily available in the 1980s from Oatly Electronics, and it even has the Oatly battery conversion board, because originally this was designed to use lithium. I'm no, not lithium mercury cells, big fat mercury button cells and a couple of cylindrical cells. Uh, of course they are long obsolete and pretty much unobtainium so Oatly also sold a kit to go with it and that's been done to it but I just don't have a good 9 volt battery as far as I know. So let's have a look at both of them. Okay that's the uh, Canadian Admiral Radiac meter with its little conversion kit. It takes one 9 volt battery and two double A's in place of the odd combination of mercury cells. And there's this very small board in here, which has a six pin IC on there. I can always remove the thing, it's not plugged in though. I do have the original battery card somewhere. Yeah, that one there. It is a H11D1, that little. 6 pin and the, fourth, the 8 pin. I don't exactly know what they're supposed to do. It's a 03463 API. Yeah, it's a little conversion kit for them. It does work. I've had this thing powered on a few times. You can uh, flip it over to check and then the needle will move all the way to the check position and stay there, indicating that it's actually accurate and calibrated. Uh, there's also a uh, set switch there uh, which you can use to zero it. So you turn it on, adjust the set switch until the needle is actually on zero. Uh, once it's on set then you can push the check button um, lever all the way over 
and it will go over to the check position. So yeah, yeah, zero calibration set and then checking, but measuring in rads per hour, yeah, you don't want to get up to that high range. You'd be kind of dead, or your face would be melting. Okay, on the CDV700, there are schematics available for this, and there's actually one in the bottom of the can. You can see there, they're pretty straightforward. Getting some of the components can be a little bit hard, but I think uh, website anythingradioactive.com, or I can't remember, I bought a few things from them, including a sling and a... Uh, there's an, another external speaker, which was basically a repainted like MP3 player speaker worked quite well, I don't know where it is now, it's around somewhere, but I'm using this one. Um, they do sell some really interesting stuff, uh, I should look them back up again and just see. But anythingradioactive.com I'm pretty sure it is, and uh, I think they stock spares for these, including GM tubes, Geiger Muller tubes. But yeah, there's, I know the high voltage side's basically flyback powered, but apart from that I don't know a lot about them, they're very basic inside when it comes to componentry because they're just so old. Obviously no integrated circuits. Some kind of tube in there, I don't know what that is. That little glass thing there. I don't know. If I had a dead one I'd actually pull it all to bits but I don't want to disturb this because these are a bit hard to find in Australia. Somebody was saying I shouldn't have even been able to import it because of that little check source there. That emits um, a very small amount of radiation. At the moment it's pretty depleted, maybe only 10 millirad at the most. Uh, but somebody was saying I shouldn't have even been able to import it because of that check source. But I don't know the credibility of that. And either way, it made it through customs, no worries. Uh, I got this off a subscriber. It was just actually, ironically it was just after the Fukushima incident. Everyone was talking about radiation meters and it kind of spurred a sort of a childhood fantasy of mine of having one of these uh, CDV meters because you see them in all the old uh, films. And uh, I just asked around on one of my channels or one of my subscribers actually posted a video on them because he buys them at swap meets dead and fixes them up and this was one of the ones that he repaired. Um, yeah, if anyone knows whether it's legal or not to import them into Australia I might take a gamble and buy a few more because I know people who want them. I can get a crate of about three of them out of the States for about $550 and over here I could probably pass them on for twice that. And they are quite handy when you're tinkering with old electronics. Yeah, without the speaker connected you can still the batteries are low in this, so it probably won't play the game. Yeah. The batteries are very low. It's not having a bit of it now. <laughs> I, was, I was lucky that it worked when, it, when I uh, first started shooting the video, but the batteries have pretty much had it. So, anyway. I wish I could give you a better view of that, but I don't have one that I really want to actually pull to pieces. I don't want to risk taking this one apart because parts can be quite hard to come by. So, yeah, it's a bit of a look at my meters, a nice little active radio radiation source, a bit of radium there. And, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for videos on this and the radar unit, as well as all the panel switches and things when I uh, get up to it. But, yeah, they're all radium as well, but the thing is that doesn't even measure a reading, so I'm guessing they're not damaged or leaking. That one there... Yeah, that makes the radiation meter really happy. Again, the levels obviously aren't high enough to cause any particular concern, but I wouldn't wear it around my neck as a pendant. pendant. Uh, over a long period of time, you'd probably encounter some health issues. But from about this far away, the meter doesn't even do anything. It's only if you're touching it or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Instant radiation therapy for your finger. <laughs> or cancer. Anyway, thanks for watching.